Lights Camera Jackson. I was a therapist recommended to start a YouTube channel and I made a video like a couple months ago and it was kind of fire but kind of boring and it was like a vlog and I mostly just did my makeup and talked about movies so I was like why not just do a video that was just that and I'm kind of in a time crunch I like literally in every get ready with me they're like I'm gonna be so late and it's like why are you filming a video then but I do have an interview for a fashion writing internship which is very exciting oh I forgot to say what I was gonna do I'm gonna talk about popular movies I hate also, you're gonna hear my brother playing video games. I don't know what to tell you. The first film that I hate is Forrest Gump. I feel kind of bad about this one because it's so beloved, but it is just not for me. I watched this for the first time in a 10th grade history class and it was far more boring than the class itself. At least in class, you get to see the teacher flirt with the popular girls, like this was not it. It doesn't feel like a classic to me. I was never once charmed by Forrest's character. Maybe I am just cold hearted. And I like Tom Hanks, especially in Elvis. I'm just kidding. I want to be original and say a sentence no one's ever said. <laughs> I need to get to my makeup, bro. The way the film treated Jenny and demonized her was just so weird to me. I don't know. I'm, it's Maybe it's because I didn't connect with Forrest as much as I could have. It just did not, it just did not, it did not. Also, it just seemed very like, America. you know what I mean? Next up on my list is La La Land. I mean, Moonlight. <laughs> that joke is eight years old. I dogged the, the fuck out of this on my story. Like, I honestly feel bad for those that enjoy it. This film peaked at its opening number. Like, I was kind of into it. Um, meow. I liked that song. I way overdid it with the color corrector. I hate this redness I have right here. Oh my god, I'm getting so distracted by actually doing my makeup. I don't know how people do this. I didn't get what I disliked about this until I went to like the lowest letterbox reviews and someone said it was the whitest shit I've ever seen. I was like, that's why. Most of the films on my list are literally just white people movies. Sorry, white people, but I'm not. Damien Chazelle, I love that guy. I was so disappointed. Why am I? He did Whiplash, which was in my letterbox top four for a minute before After Sun dethroned it. He also did, I believe he did Babylon. And Babylon was fire. It was very fun, even though there was one letterbox review. Um, also, I lost the other beauty blender and it's supposed to be a heart. That's so sad. I saw this one letterbox review that said, oh, it sure did babble on <laughs> and felt that way. It was a little long. Same with this. There was a lot of stuff in La La Land that really, really dragged and I was not here for it. I always, with the Milk Makeup Primer, have pilling with my just my color corrector. It is very odd. Aesthetically, like, I can't knock the film in that regard. Come on. It looks so cool. The colors are very bright. I love bright colors. The music just did not, like, it wasn't giving for me. They just repeat the City of Stars motif, like, the whole, like, back half of the film. It's like, you could write another song. And it is, it is, like, okay. It is, it is, like, an earworm, but that's because it is, like, hammering you over the head with it. Like, you have to know City of Stars. Like, you're having a choir concert and you need this memorized. Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling, their singing was not my fave. I feel really terrible saying that. Where the fuck is my painter's palette? They really tried. They really tried. And I support them for that. But I just... Yeah, girl. I cannot just... I just could not believe anything that was happening. Um, I keep forgetting that I have a mirror. The plot and the way that their careers turned out. The romance. I just... They were not a believable couple. Maybe a little bit at the beginning when they were like first starting out. But when they have their like big argument, it is like, do you guys never talk to each other? It was crazy to me. I just was not buying it at all whatsoever. The middle was boring as fuck. I almost abandoned it. And also like someone needs to say it. I don't think Ryan Gosling's character should have followed his dreams. Like a white guy who thinks he's gonna revive jazz and 
just this whole thing being like jazz is dead i just like think you need to seek out more music anyone that says a music genre is dead is lying like they just don't explore enough there is so much music out there oh i fucked this up really bad Ooh, these are stepsisters girl hold up john legend's in this i just thought i'd say it i don't know i don't have anything to say about his part He's, his singing is really good Next up is Twilight, directed by Katherine Hardwick. This is another one I feel bad for hating. Like, I feel like a misogynist. Mm -hmm. I remember when the films were first coming out, it was like, anyone who likes Twilight is stupid. And that basically translated to um, teenage girls who enjoy anything are stupid. But I think the movie's stupid. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm saying movie. It is a movie, not a film. First of all, I found out recently that Taylor Lautner's name is actually pronounced Taylor Lautner. And my whole world has changed. It is a very Rihanna, Chrissy Teigen, Bjork situation. A lot of people think Twilight is like a camp classic for some reason. It's not even campy because I just wasn't having fun. I was not enjoying myself. It's just a lot of heterosexual breathing. There is way too much breathing in this film. I'm sorry, but a those actors need to hold their breath. I don't know what to tell them. This wing came out like perfect, but it came with an eraser on the other end. Isn't technology amazing? The dialogue is so cringy to me and I get that it's a teen movie, so I just can't knock it, you know? It's like one of those things, it's not for me. It's just not for me. And you know, there are plenty of people that love it and you guys should have your fun, but have your fun without me. Please don't force me to watch it anymore. The people that forced me to watch Twilight were so thoroughly convinced that I was gonna love it. Like, why would you do that to me? All my loved ones hate me is basically what it taught me. I hate how the colors look. I know that that's Catherine Hardwick's style because it's present in 13. Duh, like obviously she directed it. That is so her. My phone keeps running out of storage. Edward's obsessiveness with Bella is, it just freaks me out. I'm sorry. It's not romantic or cute to me. I mean, duh, I feel like it isn't to most people, but it wasn't, I don't know, it was just weird. Not sexy at all. Team Jacob all the way, even though I know how it ends. This is obviously Stephanie Meyer's fault for writing a book like that. I didn't read the Twilight books, but I read The Host by her. And that was, it was not good. It was about this lady who was possessed by a parasite and they both shared the same like brain. It was wild and it switched perspectives and I hate that. This That is so tangential. The reason why Edward is so obsessed with Bella is because of her smell and I like to imagine that to everyone else like she smells rank. Like, <laughs> like imagine everyone at her high school is like nah this bitch stink. <laughs> I didn't watch all of the movies so I think this is in a different one or maybe I forgot but I saw something about how like one of the Cullens was a confederate? That is such a weird detail. Like, <laughs> why would you do that? Why? Oh, this is... Oh, the wigs. Whoa, I need Rebel. Next on my list is Don't Look Up. Once again, I feel bad about this one because it has an important message, but even still, it is so like, on the nose it just seemed like it was a movie for the blue check mark libs and i'm a little too far left for that unless i get rich everyone thought it was like such a big deal but i have already forgotten about it like it was not impactful to me whatsoever kid cuddy and ariana grande's parts were so weird and poorly acted. Every other performance was phenomenal. I can't knock that. Leo's panic attack was amazing. Shout out panic attacks. Real. Also, Timothy Chalamet's character was so funny. Everything he does is amazing. Thank God he's canceled because Jonah Hill's character annoyed me so bad. Like, I get that was the point, but I don't care, I didn't like it. A lot of media has like annoying characters or complicated, like douchey characters. And I get that 
it's on purpose i see what you're trying to do but i don't always like it especially when i feel like it's unsuccessful then it's like what is the point you just made something unwatchable it was giving like the obnoxious side characters in straight to dvd disney movie sequels the editing was weird oh also Meryl Streep was obviously a highlight. I really liked her in it. Just overall, the film, like, as great philosopher Peter Griffin once said, it insists upon itself. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. You know exactly what I mean. It is just Oscar Beatty to the max. And I don't even know if it won anything. I don't care. Next is another controversial one. I'm spilling shit. High School Musical. I know, I know. The first time I watched it, it was in middle school. Um, and you know, predominantly white area. Everyone's like, holy shit, you've never seen High School Musical? Like, no, I haven't. I watched it last year as a part of a drinking game. For all intents and purposes, I am 21. Even drunk, it is not fun. Even drinking with your friends, I just did not really like it the second one is so much better i like the music it is just very fun and the whole gay thing with ryan and corbin blue i enjoy that everything was so stupid the lip syncing was terrible for zach efron and vanessa hudgens there were some par parts where there were notes she couldn't hit and it's very clearly someone else singing and it was so distracting to me like i hated it sharpay is literally the only good character i remember what was the whole thing about how sharpay is not actually the villain i i don't even care i think she kind of is like duh but i mean some of the things are misinterpreted like yeah i too if someone knew was like trying to do theater, I would probably be like, you're probably not gonna get a lead. Like that is just realistic. Ooh, I, the highlighter is way too far up my cheek. But yeah, Sharpay was the only one who was truly serving. Other than that, everyone else could have been an extra, TBH. I tapped out film three of the drinking game. I was like, I can't do this. And because of this shit, Vanessa Hudgens was my top actor of last year. I hate that. I'm sorry. She's not bad. In hindsight, it's just pretty funny when she said, people are gonna die about COVID because she wanted to go to Coachella. Like, that is a pretty good pop culture moment. Last but certainly not least, the most recent film, Saltburn. Sorry, I couldn't get into Saltburn. Pretentious people, whenever someone hates shit, they're like, you just don't get it. And part of me is like, maybe I just don't get it. But maybe also they need to make a black letterbox so I can know if shit is actually worth my time. The video of her reading the letterbox reviews for this film is really funny. Like, I'll give it that. Jenny K, four stars. <laughs> Not me being jealous of a grave. <laughs> I don't want to fuck Jacob Elordi, so this kind of didn't do as much for me as it probably would have for most people. My Ipsy bag was freaking frozen when I got it from the mail. I got this Pat McGrath mascara and it was totally messed up. I had to like fix the bristles a little bit. I was so nervy that it wasn't gonna work. Ooh, this is a drama drama. Oh, it's clumping a little, Patricia. All right, the lashes are kind of lashing. It doesn't look quite like how I want it. Let me curl it again. Ooh. I like it. I'm gonna go in with a different mascara for my bottom lashes though. The sexual tension actually really worked for me. I was feeling that. I did wish Jacob Elordi and Barry Keegan fucked. I think it was missing that. If it, I just think it should have gone all in on the gay because Quite frankly, I think that is the main appeal of the film, the queer representation. You know, the gays will watch shit just for the sake of the gays being in it. The shock value shit. I, the bathtub scene was the only one that got me. That was literally someone told me there's a fucked up scene with the bathtub. You're not ready. Even me saying that, that's not even a spoiler because you're not prepared. I can't look at Barry Keegan the same. And I'm so depressed because I loved him in Banshees of Inna Sharon. All the shock value was giving the idol to me. Like that is so mean. That is like one of the biggest insults to give a piece of media. To... That is one of the biggest. 
That is one of the biggest insults you can give to a piece of media saying that it reminded you of the idol. At least the idol, even though a good portion of it was boring, I was intrigued by the music and the casting and I saw the vision of a good story. This, I see no vision. I definitely liked Promising Young Woman better than this one. And I still wasn't crazy about that. The cinematography was overhyped. Everyone is like, this is the most gorgeous film ever. I was just not, I was just not. Most of the film felt completely pointless. It never once justified its own existence. And, you know, maybe I should let the film just exist. Not everything has to be deep or interesting or good. The whole time I just felt like I was watching a movie. You know, it's like that Harry Styles interview. It feels like a, like a movie. It feels like a real, like, you know, go to the theater film movie. It is literally a movie. I wasn't immersed. I think that can be said for every single one that I talked about, actually. It was just me sitting down watching a movie in my parents' basement. The third act goes totally off the rails. It wasn't in like a cool hereditary way. It was a triangle of sadness way. And if you've seen that, you know, literally the third act of Triangle of Sadness is not the same movie. A lot of people like that about it, but a lot of people have undiagnosed mental illness. Also, this is such a nitpick, but it really, really upset me. They watch super bad on Blu-ray and the film takes place in 2006. Super bad came out in 2007 and it was on Blu-ray and so that would have taken even longer maybe even 2008 and that is just a, an oversight by the people like how did so many people so many people are involved in making a film it is one of the most collaborative art forms there is probably the most and no one there caught that that is out of this world bonkers. I didn't exfoliate my lips, so this is gonna look really flaky. I know it's douchey to be mad that something is so popular, but I'm mad that it's so popular. I really like how this look is turning out. It's still a little bit of a concealer lip. Give it a 90s flair. Also the song, you know, the song from Saltburn that is all over TikTok. I'm so mad. I hate being a gatekeeper, but I want a gatekeep. Cause it was the song in the background for Versace Spring Summer. I want to say 2008, could be 2009. So I'm tripping, whatever. I'm a fashion girly and bitches be biting. And now we're gonna do some setting spray and I'm gonna be all done. Get some little fan action. This mirror, oh my God, I used to use it as my painter's palette. She has been through it. Like, I feel like if we were in a Pixar world and this inanimate object were like anthropomorphic, you know? Is that anthropomorphic? I feel like that only applies to animals. Whatever, if it were a, a sentient inanimate object, this bitch would hate me. Like, this bitch would be like, Jackson is an abuser. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. I. I kind of did, <laughs> I guess I did. I have 15 minutes to my interview, so I have to get ready. But yeah, it's a big time for film right now. Sundance is coming up, it's award show season. There's a lot for me to be checking out. It's a good few months for pretentious assholes. So I'm very excited. Maybe I'll do this again. Okay, miss you already, bye.